A Grand Theft Auto, Super Mario Brothers, Half-Life 2, a Miner's Shaft, Cowboy Game, Tetris. There are so many games that could be considered the most iconic of all time, but for me it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This game taught me conflict resolution skills. Don't fall off your freaking bike, idiot. This game taught me how to be the best version of myself. It taught me that sacrificing a high school education to quickscope people was brave. It taught me how to be a degenerate noob tuber. Welcome back to the original Modern Warfare 2. The things kick off at a US military base where you have to show some new recruits how guns work. It's concerning that we waited until they were in Afghanistan to show them guns. I would say this base is realistic, except there is a Caucasian man winning a game of basketball. We roll out in our little jeep, but an RPG hits us and we almost die. Luckily, General Shepard is on hand to save us. What a great guy, I'm sure he'll be a chill character going forward. I hop into a Humvee and we roll the streets looking for a good time. Unarmed enemies look down upon us, but I'm ordered not to engage. The Geneva Convention really took the fun out of war. We're surprise attacked as enemy soldiers appear on every rooftop. Our vehicle is destroyed again and we manage to hide in a local's house that has surprisingly tasteful art hung on the wall. We lose our attackers by pushing into a school. The Afghan forces think the school is their ally, but they merely adopted school shootouts. The US Marines were born in it, molded by it. They didn't see safe schools until they were already men. General Shepard is like, good work, big boy. I'm going to give you a promotion. We then go to Kazakhstan on a top secret mission. We have to recover a drive from a downed Russian satellite. We stealthily eliminate the patrols and guards and eventually find the drive. While upstairs, my boy Soap gets ambushed by 20 guards, but everyone knows 20 guards are no match for two big boys and I detonate some C4 I planted earlier. Every single guard turns around at once to investigate, which is strategically questionable and we kill them all. We jump on some snowmobiles and we're safe, except Captain Soap brake checks me and I shatter every single one of my vertebrae, which causes me to die. Wow. Remember that soldier who got promoted? Well, now he's working undercover with a Russian extremist group. This is one of the most iconic missions in gaming for sure, taking place at a Russian airport. It's actually a really great facility with lots of natural light and duty-free shopping. You can pick yourself up some Russian sweets and cookies. We get on out of there via an ambulance, but then the leader Makarov is like, no taxis backsies and shoots me. This is bad as now there's an American citizen's body in the Russian airport as the lead suspect in the shooting. Makarov knew our plan the whole time. Terrible person, great secret keeper. Heading over to Rio de Janeiro in pursuit of one of Makarov's contacts. He realizes we're onto him and we chase him through the favelas. I kneecap the big girl and the lads get ready to interrogate him. I'm sure they're just going to utilize active listening and talk it through. We push forward, but then Neymar and his boys roll up and begin shooting us. We eliminate them and using the information from the guy who was spoken to nicely in the shed, we're able to capture the notorious arms dealer known as Rojas. What do you mean leaping from the third story of a building would cause grievous bodily harm? It turns out Russia isn't too happy with the whole airport incident and they launch a full-scale invasion on Washington DC. Russian troops parachute from the sky and fighter jets rain terror from above. I don't know what's more unrealistic, the fact America let this happen or that you can't bounce on the trampoline. I head into a suburban garage and see children's drawings on the wall. Why couldn't the Russians have bombed this house? These drawings are a war crime of art. It is fascinating seeing what it would be like if America was invaded. Apparently the developers did extensive research when finding inspiration for this mission. They all got on a plane and spent an entire long weekend in Detroit. I head up onto the roof and snipe countless Russians. Everyone knows hundreds of Russian soldiers are no match for one private. I then find my golden goose, an intervention sniper rifle. Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here. The boys rock up and I jump into yet another Humvee because that's been working out great for us so far. The fight to win back the city continues. Back to Brazil and it looks like we've got all the information we can out of Rojas. He told us about a secret prisoner being held in a gulag that we need to rescue. Is it really a Call of Duty campaign without a jail heist? We attempt to evacuate, but there's too much RPG fire. Rockets fly in every direction, but these Brazilians simply cannot defend this position. What is this, the 2014 World Cup semi-final? I end up boarding the Pavlo in a much cooler way and we take off into the distance like kings. And back to America and the invasion continues. Commercial planes are literally dropping out of the sky and falling onto people's homes. Like the video if you've ever survived a commercial plane crash and tell us your experience in one sentence. The Russians have set up some artillery and we're tasked with taking it out. I feel like the left-wing right-leaning centralist media never talks about the real victims of war. Golf course and country club owners. This grain is ruined. We push forward and I catch this cheeky little white Russian raiding the fridge. This was a massive wide-scale invasion you'd think he'd carb load beforehand. I guess he's just never seen a fridge with food in it before. We continue fighting back to try and save America. 
over to Russia and it's time to rescue the prisoner we learned about. Apparently both the US and Russia just have no radar or anti-air defense systems because we just fly on in. We just land right in the middle of the gulag, no worries or stress at all. These gulags are known to be some of the worst, most horrible, heinous prisons in the world. They say it's better to die than be locked up here. That's why they only give their prisoners three TVs each. I grab a riot shield, which is the most overpowered weapon in the single player campaign. Call this riot shield Finland because it's destroying the Russian military. I used to love playing search and destroy and running around with a riot shield and throwing knives. It made people so mad. My absolute favorite thing to do was wait until I was last alive in search and pretend like I was just going to stand still and let the other team trick shot on me. I'd then proceed to murder them all and get a mad multi-kill. Not the most ethical or professional way to play the game, but God, it was funny. We zip line down to the bottom level, and this is where they keep the worst of the worst, aka those with weak head game. This is where the infamous gulag showers are, which actually seem pretty great. You get to be right next to your homies so you can chat, and the guards have an impressive viewing platform to make sure you're washing between your toes. We breach the cell of the prisoner we're trying to rescue, which seems unnecessarily reckless, and it's none other than Captain Price himself. He was captured by the Russians off camera purely so this mission could happen, let's be honest. We attach ourselves to a helicopter and shoot up nine stories through a tiny hole. Tiny holes and a smooth cleanup operation, the Vatican would be proud. Back in America, things are going great. The boys and I get ready to launch an attack to retake the Department of Commerce building. Australia actually has a surprisingly impressive protocol if we were ever to be invaded. Other countries tend to be quite jealous. What we'd do is gather all of Australia's highest ranking military generals from across the nation and then we'd call America and be like, pretty pleasey lemon squeezy, can you save us? I clear out the lobby with a grenade launcher. Even though so many innocent civilians died, one thing didn't die and that's chivalry. A simple act of holding the elevator can make someone's entire day. We storm through the building, taking down our enemies with incredibly beneficial and tactical drop shots. Our evac chopper arrives and this is the first time all game we've hopped into a vehicle and not been immediately destroyed. We rain down fire from above and just kidding we are instantly shot down. Imagine hopping out of a vehicle before it's exploded, kind of cringe. Meanwhile in Russia, the recently rescued Captain Price has a cute little plan to save America. We sneak through the snow sniping patrols as we head towards a Russian nuclear submarine. We slide down hills together and snipe everybody at the harbour. A handful of soldiers verse an entire Russian platoon and we win easily. They put up no fight at all. Maybe this game is realistic. And Captain Price gets on board one of the submarines and fires a nuclear weapon at the east coast of America. It's a ballsy plan, I'll give him that, but I do believe by definition he is now an international radical extremist. Back to America and our helicopter crash and things are just going swimmingly. It's always a good sign when you're checking if your hands are still attached. While Big Dog recovers, we jump to an astronaut in space who's watching the nuke head towards Washington. Captain Price really is a cheeky little minx. At least the astronaut is safe in space, just kidding, Captain Price detonates the nuke before it lands, which apparently hits you if you're in space. COD really does teach you more than school ever will. This explosion acts as an EMP, meaning all electronical systems fail at once and aircraft begin falling out of the sky, halting the Russian invasion in its tracks. Pure genius. I mean, a lot of Americans are also dying, not to mention the infrastructure damage, but you don't win a war saving women and children. All electronics are out, even my red dot sight. This soldier runs out waving his hands and tells us everyone's rendezvousing at Hotel Whiskey. We sneak through the city and eventually find the public housing where the president lives. Our mission is to take back the White House. You should follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It'll be the best decision you make today. Probably not, but still, you should. We break in and my squad leader immediately starts stealing artwork, which is cultural appropriation at its finest. Only the Brits are allowed to steal art. I eliminate many highly armed Russians and we make our way to the rooftop. We begin lighting green flares and waving them to stop the US jets from bombing us at the last second. For the love of God, let's just hope the Russians don't have this green flare technology. At the last moment, the jets manage to pull out, which is hard to do. Sometimes you get caught up in the moment. Back to the Russia-Georgia border and the lads and I have to steal a hard drive that has all of Makarov's plans on it. It's thoughtful of him to put all his secret plans in one convenient location. It's the little things fugitives do to show they care. It turns out he knew we were coming and his troops ambush us. I quickly whip out an AC-130 gunship and rain terror down from above so that I can drop a tactical nuke on these dodgy malakas. We take photos of the evidence. Honestly, most of this stuff is paper. We could just fold it up and take the originals, but that would be hard to animate. We set up a wireless hard drive to steal all of his information and then defend the area via collaterals that are so dirty this video probably won't have ads on it. The lads and I escape through the forest to our evac chopper where our good mate General Shepard is waiting to greet us. He's like, good work, big fella, you did great, and then he kills me and ghost in cold blood. At least we'll get a military funeral. 
He proceeds to order his men to throw us into a ditch. At least our families will one day find the bodies. He proceeds to have his men cover us in petrol and then he flicks a cigar onto us all cinematic-like. This is one of the biggest betrayals in gaming history for sure. The General is a massive dick, but in his defense, Captain Price did fire a nuke at America which has given our group a pretty bad reputation. A huge battle breaks out between General Shepard and Makarov's men and we're caught in the middle of a huge firefight. We get on the old radio and tell Makarov that he should give us the location of General Shepard, which he actually does. Maybe he's not really a bad guy. Back where it all started in Afghanistan, Captain Price and I get ready to assassinate the General. Price immediately calls in an F-1 fighter jet strafing run on several Miami, Florida beaches to throw Shepard off our scent. Not really, but I wouldn't be surprised. We abseil down onto two guards who have the situational awareness of a librarian in a K-hole. Not going to lie, the guy I killed has dreamy hazelnut eyes. We sneak through the extensive tunnel system and conveniently most of the guards are facing the wrong way. There is a lot more of them though and the fight is on. Fortunately, I know a thing or two about getting out of a sticky situation. I used to date this girl way back in my grade in high school and she had really religious parents. The only way we could spend more time alone together was to pretend we were studying the Bible. Like my school was really religious. So I put on my lamest sweater and head over to her place to brush up on the book of Psalms. She'd warned me about her parents, but I wasn't ready for the interrogation I was about to experience. They're asking about my faith and my favorite Bible verse. I don't know any verses, so I just confidently open up to a random page and say, I hold this one close, and proceed to read a passage. Genesis 19, 31, 32. Our father is old and there is no man around here to give us children. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. Needless to say, the relationship didn't last. We breach and clear the room where Shepard should be, but it's filled with an absurd amount of explosives. Classic villain behavior. We narrowly escape and hop on a boat to chase him down. I shoot an Uzi with one hand and manage to easily destroy several boats because everyone knows this is an accurate way to fire a weapon. We reach a waterfall and Price is like, Oi, stop, mate. Wow, great advice. I'll just change how raging rivers work, Captain Price. We fall to the bottom and wash up on the shore, dazed and confused. I locate Shepard and attempt to give him a little stab, but the almost elderly man manages to reversal me and stabs me in the gut. As he prepares to eliminate another major character, Price comes in out of nowhere and tackles him, saving my life. I pull the knife out of my body and throw it straight into Shepard's face, concluding one of my favorite revenge arcs of all time. What a sick game. Lads and lasses, I've started uploading on my second channel again. There's already a CSGO video up, I've got a GTA RP police video planned, and Zanny and I will be playing Subnautica co-op soon, so definitely check that out if you're looking for more to watch. Search Papa Pelly on YouTube. Otherwise, drop a like if you enjoyed this. I love you.